Uh, to start the day, we're going to hear about a technology that, that really has a, the potential to change the paradigm of medical education. So they don't let pilots fly planes unless they put thousands of hours into a simulator. And, and yet we're still treating medical education like it's, it's something that we can teach and then let, let people go out and, and work with. So the development of simulation in medical education is, is really catching up and UNMC is on the forefront of this. And I'm really proud to say that we're developing what I think will, can be the standard for minimally invasive surgery in a, a simulation training environment. This presentation also shows how important collaboration is. And so I, I tried to connect all the dots and I'm probably missing two or three, so correct me if I'm wrong here. But the initial idea was a collaboration between UNL, Carl Nelson, and UNMC, Dr. Joseph Sue. Uh, the technology is, came to UNIMED. Um, we've uh, identified some development funds through a new institute called Unitech, which is helping us develop new technologies. I, I believe we're also applying to the Department of Economic Development for some development funds, which can help support this through their academic R&D um, project. And, um, We've also partnered with a, a local development firm, uh, The Garage by Aviture, to help bring this into a commercial format. And so today we get to hear from Dr. Sue and a representative from The Garage, Jeff Hansen, and they're going to tell us about uh, the technology forecast, uh, the development that they're, that they're going with, and, and um, why we think it's really exciting. So if you were able to attend the IXL Expo yesterday, you, you had a chance to maybe see and play with the technology. I took it for a test drive, and I'm proud to say I, I scored, I think, a third grade level, uh, maybe. So um, most people are, are better than me at that, but that's OK. I guess I'm not going to be doing surgery anytime soon. So uh, Dr. Sue, Jeff, if you guys want to come up. Thanks, Michael. And I'm going to keep it on this slide first and just say what the project is again. It's the portable camera-aided system. And I'm just going to say portcast going forward. And as Michael said, we're looking at a new way to uh, deliver training uh, within healthcare. And um, my background, as we talked about, is with the Garage by Avature. But this project, as Michael said, was, was a collaboration. And I'll kind of restate some of what you said. Um, it started out with uh, UNMC, UNL, and then Unimed to develop a hardware a software, and then a commercialization plan. And then recently, the Garage by Avature and Avature um, got involved in terms of refining or augmenting the prototype and then developing a go-to-market go strategy and plan. So before previewing and demonstrating Portcast, which is where Dr. Sue will come in, um, I'd like to set the stage and provide a little bit of context about what we're doing. And it's fitting that today I'm talking about technology on the day that was referenced in 1989's Back to the Future uh, sequel. The world has changed a lot since then, uh, especially for students. And this is really what this is all about. Today's students are different. First, they get information instantaneously from myriad sources. And any of you, if any of you have children that are students, um, either in high school, even elementary school, or in college, you know that they learn a lot differently and they absorb information a lot differently than they did in 1989. Um, they collaborate instantaneously through social media and things like instant messaging. Um, they are steeped in gaming and gaming technology. And I could go on and on and on about the differences. But this really leads to the challenge of education and training. Um, First, how do we use modern tools to engage students? Um, next, in a world of free apps, how can we offer training that is inexpensive and accessible to everyone? And then lastly, how can training methods fully evolve to engage students? And at this moment, um, we are missing an opportunity, I believe. But the good news is that we have an opportunity to really change the game in terms of of how we train individuals in healthcare and in other fields as well. Um, concepts like gamification, predictive learning, analytics, 3D visualization, and software as a service are popular buzzwords, but when combined into a platform, these technologies have the potential to thoroughly engage today's students. And this modern platform is really at the heart of what we're doing with Portcast. 
Uh, first of all, the platform is extensible to other products. So the software behind it can link to other products, either ones that have been developed today or ones that are going to be developed in the future. Its content is engaging through gamification, 3D visualization, and predictive learning. Its analytics are, are robust through real-time real performance reporting and comparison to standards. And lastly, it's, it's universally accessible through a web-based browser. And now to the really fun part, I'm, I want to introduce Dr. Sue first. Uh, Dr. Sue is an associate professor and coordinator with uh, the Division of Physical Therapy Education at UM, UNMC. He also has over a decade of research in areas uh, related to uh, podcasts, including uh, predictive learning and analytics, and has published papers with uh, Dr. Alinikov here at UNMC. Um, one specifically is virtual laparoscopic surgical skills practice using a multi-degree of freedom joystick. So you can see there's a little bit of uh, the gaming involved in that. Um, so Dr. Sue, I'll pass it on to you and we'll try to get this going. There we go. All right, thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Michael. So um, the idea is of podcast is pretty basic. If we can move a humongous simulator, about $100,000, and then move it like tiny little boxes, as well as is cheap enough for every medical student in the world can have one. Um, I think that is the goal that we're trying to do. As well as learning is a continuum spectrum, so you should be able to learn whenever and then wherever you want. So the podcast has that um, vision, hopefully, that um, the system are able to af be affordable as well as uh, portable um, for um, students who would like to learn um, skills, uh, especially laparoscopic surgical skill in this example. Um, I want to just, just go ahead to show you a example we did yesterday um, during um, the IXL um, expos. So this is a, a actual performance that recorded yesterday um, from a student uh, who are interesting to admit to UMMC in the future. So the idea is like the podcast uh, is a web-based environment and then providing um, a number of level of um, training, especially this one is a very basic, we require high coordinated skills precision as well as pretty high depth perception skills as well. So the idea is that we're providing the environment to tell the student how good they are or where they can improve, um, as well as we're providing instantaneous feedback with respect to their performance, such as speed or smoothness. Those are pretty key elements that as a student or future surgeon to be acquired in the future. Okay, and the student did pretty good job. Okay, after a few practice. <laughs> so the podcast basically provide um, a uh, full analytical performance uh, or analysis so that um, as a student who are able to keep track the performance full time, as well as as an instructor, they will be able to go through those performance um, through um, the web-based environment. So. Um, there is a possibility that the instructor or the teacher can sit next to the student to go through their performance um, uh, in a simultaneous fashion. Um, as well as the student are able to see how good they are um, um, among their classmates too. Um, and then the report is pretty important, especially when we can looking at their improvement. Um, for instance, how smooth they are through times or how fast they are able to complete the task. Um, those long-term analytical is very important when a student who become a resident or a fellow in the future. So we are kind of creating a platform for a lifelong learning um, uh, as a, 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 a comprehensive platforms. 
So um, we will be able to do is an online practice, like we can provide online classes, um, especially we can do an introduction of laparoscopic, uh, laparoscopic surgery um, uh, at, on campus or in different medical school as well. And then we can provide um, um, a pre-comprehensive result based upon our analyt analytical um, uh, algorithms. And you will see that um, on the left side, there's a list of like, students that are able to line up. Um, basically, what happened is like, in order for the student to be competitive enough so they can see the class and how did they do. So it's kind of like competitive mode that all the medical students are, have inherited inside their body. So uh, I will go back to uh, Jeff to complete this presentation, especially looking at how we can market this um, in the future. So hopefully that gave you a taste of really how you can apply some of these modern technologies to really change the game in education. And right here is a, a go-to-market roadmap, really three steps, um, each building on each other. The first step is proof of concept at UNMC. And as Dr. Sue said, it's really covering a broad spectrum of education, all the way from high school to residency and possibly even post-residency. Um, and specifically at UNMC, um, the areas we'd like to focus are the High School Alliance Program, which is offered through the medical school, um, the clerkships M1 through M4 at UNMC, residency programs, uh, specialties of general surgery, uh, urology, and OBGYN, and maybe even orthopedics. Um, and then lastly, an IXL in a classroom. And that's really the first phase. And that, that phase ideally would occur over the next two years. Approve out the concept, and then take what's learned from there and do a couple things. License uh, the, the, the back-end analytics and software to other manufacturers and then also to sell the product that relates to laparoscopic simulation training to other medical school, medical programs, uh, teaching colleges or schools, and then simulation centers. And then where it really gets fun is the new product expansion. And this is where um, the platform is linked to virtual reality, task trainers, patient simulators, both what exists and what's going to evolve and what we don't even know about. And lastly, just want to leave this with you before we open it up to questions. Forecast uh, is proof of concept at UNMC right now. Again, it uses new technology to benefit healthcare training. Web-based, real-time feedback, performance analytics, something we didn't talk about a lot, but which is important. It's low cost and it's portable. And um, laparoscopic simulation training is just the start. So with that, thank you. and. Dr. Sue, if you want to come up, we'll open it up to a couple minutes of questions. You said it was low cost. Um, what's the cost comparison with what's currently available on the market versus what your box and software would be? Low, it's low cost relative to the higher end simulators like a, a, a Mimic, for example. Um, it's more expensive than a rudimentary box trainer, for example, which is not very expensive at all. How many patents do you have and are they software and or hard, uh, software? Um, so far we get one. Um, basically looking at is the hardware design. And do you have that as a utility patent? Um, that one, I, I think so. Yes, that's true. Thank you. Since you're really focusing on psychomotor uh, skill development, have you benchmarked this against a standard such as a more expensive simulator or the less expensive simulator? Um, we, yes, we're currently doing a study to validate whether this current model compared with a standard laparoscopic box that uh, as a standard um, in the laparoscopic surgical domain um, so we believe that um, as a current pilot study, we will see pretty promising results that they're pretty equivalent. Yep. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks.